Welcome to my studio, I'm Vlad Duchev, and today we're going to talk about after long break, and I will explain you why we had that break. Uh, today I'm, I would like to talk about three pillars uh, of the paintings, and these three pillars are mine three pillars that I build my paintings, paintings on. And the pillars are, number one is composition, uh, number two, pillar number two is the values, and pillar number three is the hues or colors, the palette, all right? And those three pillars support the painting on top. And the painting, which is very, very, very important, is the story, all right? So let's break those three and the painting apart and see what those you know pillars and the painting is all about, all right? So let's get started. Before we jump on uh, those three pillars that we, you know, I'm briefly going to explain the reason why it's important and uh, why you need to pay attention to those three pillars. Uh, those three pillars support the, the, uh, the roof, right, so-called, or painting. Uh, but before we jump on those three pillars, I just want to jump on that, you know, painting. What is the painting? And I normally ask my students, which I this year I cut a lot. Um, my mentorship program, I used to have a lot of students, uh, students, and I cut it to, to minimum uh, because I realized that uh, my time was uh, summary, or you know, it was, I was giving a lot to students, and and my paintings were struggling. My time for paintings was minimizing, minimized. So I decided to release that time for painting because I want to paint more than anything else. But at the same time, I like teaching, and uh, teaching is a one of the process of my studying as well. Uh, one of the greatest professor uh, in Ukraine once told me uh, that the best way to uh, learn is to teach. Uh, because when you're teaching, you're trying to take everything from your mind and um, kind of group it together and analyzing you're basically analyzing and pulling all the small pieces in, in my and group them group them together to give it to the student and that's sometimes like wow you know like I, it was in chaotically spread in, in the brain and then right now you pull all together organize it and that's a something you can give to to someone uh, to share so that's the reason i'm teaching so let's go back to painting so what is the painting one of the questions uh, question i ask my students is this uh, what's the similarity between book writer and a painter? And it's very, very simple. They both the storytellers, right? They both the both storytellers. The book writer, we can pull actually another one person here. So the painter, the book writer, and the composer, music composer. So what are the similarities? All right. So similarity number one is blank page. <laughs> or in the, for the painter, it's a black, a blank, white canvas. For the book writer, it's a blank piece of paper, and for the composer, it's a blank piece of notes. Not notes, but scale, right? It's just just lines, nothing else. There's not a single note, not a single tonality or you know measures or anything. It's just blank. So the all three, all three are standing in front of nothing. So they have to create the story. All three have the tools for it. For example, composer has a piano or whatever it, it, he uh, he's using as an instrument uh, or like a, you know, like a baton, everything is in the head. But there is a tools, musical tools just to press and, you know, compose and, and express it. Uh, express what he wants to tell, you know, what story he wants to tell. A uh, book writer is, you know, piece of paper, pen, and story, right? The painter, the same thing, canvas, brush, colors, and all the, whatever we, you know, uh, technical materials we have for paintings. That's, that's a similarity. So before the painter touched the canvas, before the bookkeeper, I'm bookkeeper, <laughs> book writer will touch the you know the piece of paper uh and before the music, composer musical composer will press the notes 
they want to find the story because all three are storytellers. They tell, tell the story. The composer is telling the story in using his tools, or her tools, the musical notes, right? The wave of uh, uh, music, wave of notes, tones, uh, and he's putting those notes together so they they sound pleasing, they sound welcoming. Uh, book writer is using words to put those words, uh, first of all, find the right words, right? And then as a music composer, finding the right notes to put the words together so it's so interesting to start reading and you cannot stop to the end. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that. Or the sandy painter. We have the tools, and before we touch the canvas, right? We need the story. We need what the story, what I'm going to tell, what I'm going to paint, and what I'm going to tell. What is the story of this, of this painting? And this is a, one of the biggest, biggest disconnect right now. And I see throughout like paint hours, uh, working with students, and they, they have people trying to paint just to paint, just to study the technical skills. And that's it. They think, oh, now I know how to paint, and that's it. That's it. You dry. This, this is it. You got the technical stuff, and then stop. It's a dead stop. Because with technical skills, how to paint, you cannot tell the story. Uh, same as you have a story, but you don't know how to paint. You cannot paint. So you have to combine it together. Same as a book uh, writer. He needs to, you know, he has a story, but I have a lot of stories, but I'm not. I cannot write. It just it's not my thing. Like I, I can paint, I can compose the music. Uh, and same in com composer, musical composer. If you don't have the technical skills, you, you you may you know hear that music in your in your in your brain in your mind, but you cannot express it by using the right you know ability to put the notes together and put them group them together and know all the technical stuff. So it's fusion. It's a harmonized fusion of technical skills and the uh, ability to express yourselves. So these are the similarities. So we are the storytellers. Now, uh, when you listen to music, why are you listen to music from the start to the end? Because there is some interest, right? It's beat or the harmony of the notes or something that keeps you listening the entire piece from the start to the end. And normally the end is the, you know, the explosion of emotions and like wow and final you know the end same with the book whatever they tell you the book uh, i'll tell you the story uh, uh let's say uh somebody met and they you know f fell in love with each other and then and then i don't know what the story story and i'm coming up with the story but uh whatever i tell you in the first chapter the whole thing uh from start to end and then i'll tell you now read the the rest of the uh, 120 chapters, so I can explain you what I just said in the front, like whole story, right? They love each other, then they broke, and then blah, 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 and here's the end. Now, let me tell you the story. I'm not going to read the book if I know the story in the, in, from the beginning, right? So, normally, the good book is, or good story is intrigue in the beginning, and then, you know, Kind of like a music crescendo, or you, you you're going through the book, and then at the final chapter is bam, bam, and you know the story, right? And it's like wow, and I, I spent all this time reading, you know, going through 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 entire book just to enjoy it, or how many times we actually are reading the book, and then a year later we pick that book again and reading it again, because it just give us harmony, it give us peace. It gives us emotions, right? Same thing with the music. Why not same thing with the painting? Absolutely, yes. The painting is the same thing. You have to tell the story, and you have to tell the story so there is a start, and not this you know story that it's like whoop, and that's it, it's done. No, there's a story, and then emotion that's going. So the person is getting into into the painting, and reading and imagining how many times we you know listen to music and we imagine something how many times we're reading a book and we imagine the actual sceneries you know the people that are talking to each other or whatever book is all about we're imagining this 
why in the painting we just look at the painting and that's it. No, that's the same thing. We want to look at the painting and we want to imagine and process it and don't tell the story from the from the first second of your painting, right? You have to give some clue, some you know intrigue, and then let people imagine what is in the canvas. That's why I love abstract. I love abstract because my mind is like, wow, this is my you know playground. This is my like sand sand whatever they call it when you know, children play in the sand. I love to be there because I can imagine stuff. Painting is all about imagining. So my point is painting is the story. And if you if you start learning painting, you have to put it like in the front of you. I will be the storyteller first. And then I will learn te techniques, all the techniques of painting to tell the story. If you start from this point, you will be successful. If you start with, no, I need to learn techni techniques and stories like, ah, I will paint something, people will be looking at this because it's just gorgeous. No. No. People are not going to look at this because it's gorgeous. Because people will be looking at your painting because it's a story. There is a story behind this, guys. All right. So that is the painting. That's a story. That's the main, main thing. Now, how to do it properly. So how to get to that story, how to tell the story properly, right, is those three pillars. It's like, uh, let's say, a uh, composer, right? He, is, he has a nose, right? But he needs to put those notes in the right order so they sound really good. He needs to put the crescendo or diminuendo or forte or piano to make sure those notes are, you know, have emotions. Same on, you know, book, uh, uh, book writer. He using the right words in the right manner, order, to make sure when you're reading it's pleasing. It's like you creating those emotions or you know, dynamics to get into like main, po main uh, point. Same in the painting. How to, yeah, you have tools. How to get all this. Put in the order. Put in, in the order so it's pleasing. So those are the three pillars are the tools to get the right story. And the first tool is composition. So the composition. The composition is the, the person who is actually telling the story. Imagine someone open the book uh, and start reading a very interesting book. That composer actually, you know, another composer, the book writer, put everything right. But the person who is reading is reading like a monotone, right? Like, yes, this was this and that, love that. And probably 10, 15 seconds and it's like, no, I cannot read this. Like, I cannot listen to this. There's a, a lot of, I, I'm listening to a lot of preachers and there's several preachers. They're preaching the right thing, but I just cannot stand how they preach. The voice and everything. I just you know, I just can't. I, I know they teach the right thing, but I cannot stand uh, the matter of how they how they speak. Or the same thing in the painting. The composition, the number one, the composition is the person who is telling the story. Your composition needs to be absolutely right. So the shapes that you put on the canvas needs to be the beginning of the story, which is very important. The beginning of the story, not tell this whole story right away. The beginning of the story it's a pleasing because when i'm looking i has an intrigue no, there's an intrigue there's something that i want to look and start uh, uh, getting that story start reading the story right so that's composition the decomposition consists of shapes right it's just the shapes that put together so for example if i take um this two car i just grab it from from, from my um mixing board so if I take those two cups and I put them like this on the canvas, and it's like maybe interest, but if I put it like this behind and I start moving them, so there's a story. That's a composition. You have two shapes, but you can put it blindly, like symmetrically, and there's no story, or you can put them in one flipped, one you know flip like this, or so basically it just it's just moving shapes, and you try to get it right. So it's it's there is a story. You, you're telling the story. So that's a composition. It's very, very important. The composition, if the composition is not right, but your values are on the other spot, like perfect, and your colors are gorgeous, there is no interest. 
the first reaction that brings us into the painting is actual composition, nothing else. The composition, it's it's combination of those three, but the composition is dominated. Let's 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 put it this way. So yeah, the hues, uh, the values draw our attention to painting, but the composition is dominates. If composition is, is right, I'm drawing to that painting or people drawing to that painting. If composition is not right, even the hues and everything is just reject our interest. All right. So composition, composition. If you want to study composition, this will be another probably video. What you know how to study composition. There's so many ways of uh, studying composition and. Um, one thing I, I will mention about composition is it's not the technical. Uh, there is a technical aspect, yeah, like one third, not the center, or you know, there are so many, uh, you know, the rule of golden spot and everything. Yes and no. I I see a, a you know bunch of paintings where focal point, the interest, the story is right in the dead center, and the painting works, and I can look at that painting for hours. Uh, I can see a lot of paintings that uh, compose uh, on one third and it's just plain and just, you know, it's just story that I know from the beginning. Uh, <clears throat> so there is a, a, the composition is, is something that is attached to your emotions, attached to uh, what you play, how you're placing shapes on the canvas. It can be in one third, it can be out of one third, it can be in the center, it cannot be up uh, and can be outside of the center. It's it's not something that you um, you want to learn um, because that's a rule. Yes, it's a rule, but that rule is broken so many times as great painters and great paintings from those painters. So we cannot say, oh, this is a rule 100 percent So if there is no if there's a rule and there is a successful paintings that breaking that rule, that this is not a rule. <laughs> so to speak. So you have to always, always, and, and I, I was the one who was pushing it really hard. No, 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 this is, this is, this is the right, you know, t technique. This is what, in, in the books, uh, especially like um, schools, like Russian school of painters, that's, but you can look at Levitan, you can look at Repin, and they're breaking this rule many, many times. So uh, it is what the story, and they came to this conclusion um, not far, not a long time ago, the story is the main thing, and you need to support your story. If you didn't have the story, then whatever how you put the things on the on the canvas, it's not gonna be. It's not gonna have the interest. People's not gonna look at this and keep it for years and you know and years, hundred years, or maybe thousand years. Uh, you need to tell the story. All right. So this is a composition again uh, to study composition. One of the best way to study composition is to find a very good uh, artist uh, with a good solid composition uh, and maybe study from this artist. Uh, I believe in studying with someone uh, and I'm not preaching to study with me, but I believe that if you want to be su successful in painting, you have to pick someone and study with that person. Uh, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three. You can study composition from one per one artist, study values from another, and hues from another. That's a composition. Uh, pillar number two is the values. So values are very important uh, as well. Uh, the values will keep that interest and support the composition and the story all together. And I normally call exile for myself. This is my expressions and my. Um, my spiel of you know those three pillars. It's not uh, in the books. It's not you know academic point of view. It's just what I, I came uh, with in my paintings. So the values I normally call values the glue of the painting uh, because the values will glue paintings together. They push. They not push. The values will will collect and assemble as like a puzzle. Assemble the painting together so it's not falling apart. That's it by values. Uh, and the values normally, I would recommend, highly recommend, how we study the values. Sketch, right? We take the pencil, piece of paper, and then we start uh, putting values. Uh, the values normally come from one to 10. One is darker, 10 is lighter. Uh, and we study the values by you know pushing hard or putting several layers with pencil, 
or light touch to, to bring the value up. I would highly recommend doing actually uh, breaking your studies into three, uh, three steps. Step number one is uh, on a piece of paper with pencil and studying just composition and shapes. Just put the shapes, you can put some high, you know, light uh, values, but the main point of sketch is the composition with the shapes. So you put the shapes, break it into like four, three, four sh main shapes and see if you can move some, some you know, shapes around to find that welcoming, uh, very welcoming uh, composition or lay layouts of your shapes to support your story. That's number one. Now, if you want to study the values, I highly recommend, and I recently started with my students as well, uh, taking actually black and white paint on a small piece of canvas, something like, you know, really small, uh, something like this. It's a four by four by six. I have tons. I normally get a gator board uh, 24 by 36 and cut in the small pieces, four by sixes like this for studies. Uh, this is actually study in, in hues and colors. Um, I, I do the same thing on black and white. And you take a black and white, uh, black and white paint. You can do acrylic, gouache, watercolor, whatever you're using, medium you're using, or oil. And you take black and white, and a, and a white canvas, and you just study the values. And the main thing is to keep the values close uh, together. So if the scale is one to ten, you you decided okay so this painting probably will be on dark tone so you select one two three four and keep the painting in those four values pull them together and make sure it's not jumping all over or you say you know what this painting probably should be on mid-tone um, so you you will take four five six and seven uh, and paint your study in black and white going from four to seven four five six and seven Keep them together or you may say you know what this painting let me try this painting in actual high high tones so you move to seven eight nine and ten and keep again together uh, accents we don't you know call, count accents as the, the value you, you have a shapes and those shapes has a value accents is just a touch of to point to you know the viewers to look at this first and then wander through the painting so the accents is just the accent pieces so they can be spread around but the main shape should be in, in close values again this is my uh this is my teach my you know my spiel uh that's what i found for myself it's not an you know, academic uh, uh, basis for all the you know generic paintings all right so the values are very important study study values because the values values uh are the glue or is the glue of the painting. And the uh, pillar number three is the hues, the colors. And the colors are very important. Again, that's a third pillar because this is the how we are welcoming the viewers to the paintings. And it's the comfort, the comfort that we give with the hues. Uh, you, from technical standpoint, we know that some colors are in harmony, which is our, which with each other, uh, complementary colors, they complement each, each other. Uh, there are colors that cannot be put together because they make mud and they just scream to each other. And that's true, that's from technical. But if you analyze paintings, and you can probably find it you know, uh, on uh, on internet right now, uh, the palette of, let's say, Claude Monet, or palette of Cezanne, or palette of uh, you know different artists, different artists. Um, there is a studies of their palette, and you will see those you know, the, the palette, the group of colors are in harmonies. It's just complete harmony. So that's why it's like uh, in the music uh, when you take the chord and this chord is like wow, you know, so relaxed. It's just pleasing it's just like honey on your you know in your heart honey on your heart i'm not sure this is the expression but it's just pleasing it's just it's just so easy to uh to listen right in the music there is a consonance and dissonance thing that is in the, in the human ear cannot really it's 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 you know it's not pleasing to to hear and then you know this side of 
nodes together, which are very pleasing. Uh, in the books, the same thing. You you know, there's I can you know, I can say a sentence in one way, and it's very pleasing. I can put the words around, and it's like, what did you just say? Yeah, what you just said? Uh, like I'm speaking right now, right? They're probably huge discomfort. Uh, so same in, in in the paintings. The palette is that combination of you know the right words in the right order, or right notes in the right order, or right paint in the right order. So that's a pleasing palette. So I recommend, and that's what I'm teaching before you start painting, before you have a story, right? You you come up with the story, you have the shapes, the composition, you know the tonality, or not tonality, but the uh, what tones you will be painting on, what values, so mid-tones, or dark tone, or light tone. Now, you need to apply the third pillar as a hue, and make sure that hue is supporting the painting, supporting the shapes, composition, everything, and it's a pleasing. Pleasing not only a piece of, you know, canvas, but it's pleasing the viewer, because it's supporting your story. And that's that's most important in painting. And where I'm going with all this, the studies. I see my students a lot of time. They want to jump on painting and just paint. And sometimes even say, you know what? I I sign up for for you know just I learn to paint, and I, that's what we do. I'm teaching you to paint. I'm not going to teach you how to mix the colors. Even I will teach you how to mix the colors. I will teach you how to, you know, see the right values or the composition. But I'm I'm teaching you first of all. First of all, I'm teaching you how to tell the story. You know, you have to come up with the story. I'm not going to tell you the story because that's will be my story. But you find the story. You tell me the story. The first thing when I when, uh, I ask my students when they send me a photo to paint, tell me the story. They will probably be laughing right now. Oh, that's the first question. Tell me the story. I want to hear the story. If there is no, no story, don't paint it. Because it's just will be... I mean, you can paint, but I'm not going to help you. Because yeah, it's useless time. It's just, you're wasting time. Tell the story. So the story comes first. And then to tell the story, you need to have all these technical skills, which you, you, know, you can learn. And the three pillars to tell the story is composition, the values, and the hues, the colors, the palette. And then uh, the story will be uh, the story will be interesting. Uh, and another thing is don't tell the story from from the beginning. I uh, mean, don't put all the details in in, in the paintings. Uh, or how to not to tell the story is another subject. How to give that interest and then keep it to the end that's another subject too and it's probably a huge not huge but it's a standalone lesson and how to do it is the study work a lot a lot of study work so you have to uh, do a lot of sketches and then you have to do a lot of value studies then you have to do a lot of uh, huge study color studies then you have to do in you know if you have several small studies and you want to paint big don't jump on big one jump on bigger a little bit bigger one and then jump on uh, something big and th and this will take time that's for sure it will take time all right so main three points of painting in my opinions uh, opinion is composition value and uh, the hue the color the palette all right so that will be all for this part and second part will be the um Second part will be the demo. So I'm going to apply these three pillars to this story uh, that I have. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, I took an image. I'm, unfortunately, I cannot paint outside today because of the weather. Uh, but I had took this image uh, last summer, I think. And I found it and I decided to, because I, I, I like the story. So I'm not going to tell you the story. Uh, I have the story behind this painting, but I want you to when the painting will be ready, uh, finished, I wanted to tell me the story when I'm telling you, and I'm, you know, we'll compare it maybe. So uh, I'm going to jump with this demo, and we're going to finish the demo. So this is all for today. Uh, three main pillars, 
you know, the composition, the values, and the hues, and the story that support you know, all these pillars supporting the story, the painting, but the, the painting is the story. Story you want you want to tell, your voice. Uh, you, you the storyteller, so you have to tell people the story. All right. All for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like if you like it. If you don't like it, don't press the like. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna come up with a lot of um, new videos. Uh, I sign up for new um, new competitions for this year. Uh, we're going to new places, so it will be interesting. I hope it will be interesting. And uh, uh, we'll learn, keep going, learning the paintings and the stories on the paintings. All right. So I'll see you next time.